Hello. In this video, we return to the question of how to pair a function with its power series representation. In the first video in this series on this series of videos on power series, we um, saw that the geometric series with the radius being equal to x and the first term being equal to 1 will converge so long as the absolute value of x is less than 1 just like the for the ratio test I mean for the for the geometric series and um, that ratio is x for us and we know what it converges to because it's um, a, there's a formula based off the first term and the ratio 1 over 1 minus x is what it converges to and that's going to be a function in this video what we're going to look at is using this particular series to then find the power series representation of other functions okay maybe we can just algebraically manipulate this guy to be able to find the power series for another function maybe we can um, take this series and um, take its derivative or take its integral and so let's build up our library of functions that for which we know the power series representation for how about 1 over 1 plus x it looks just like this guy 1 over 1 minus x so how can we use what we have to get what we want you got to use what you got to get what you want all right so what do we have we have 1 over 1 minus x we want 1 over 1 plus x if we want it to look just like the previous one one in the numerator, one in the denominator. The difference is the minus when we have a plus. But plus is just minus in disguise. Plus is really minus a minus. Now we have exactly the same format. One over one minus something. And it's that something then that must be raised to the end in the summation form. You end up with the same interval of convergence. We didn't do much, but algebraically manipulated. Uh, you got to be careful, though. Sometimes algebraically manipulating with a, with a constant other than one will actually change the uh, the uh, the interval of convergence. But but this this has the same interval of convergence. And so uh, what you can do with that negative x that's raised to the n, you can break it apart and have it negative one raised to the n, and then x raised to the n. That kind of isolates the alternating series term, and then the x to the n. So if the geometric series above at the top there is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, then the series for 1 over 1 plus x is going to be that guy but alternating. 1 minus x plus x squared minus x cubed and on and on forever. Now that's not new enough to make it to our list and have its own place in our list of library of functions that we know the power series for. But we can algebraically manipulate anybody who's on the list to get another guy. All right. It turns out that we can build a series from a previous series by taking the derivative of the function and the derivative of the series. It's called term by term differentiation. Generically, we have a power series up above there centered at x equals a with a radius convergence of some capital R. And what we're going to do is take the derivative of the function f of x and take the derivative of the power series, either term by term, the actual individual first five or four terms. And we're going to also maybe um, all, um, look at taking the derivative of the summation as well. OK, so there's our function. And then here's our derivative, the term by term part. C0's derivative is 0, but C1x's derivative is C1. The derivative of c2 times the quantity of x minus a squared is 2c2 times the quantity of x minus a. 3c3 times the quantity of x minus a squared, and so on forever. When it comes to the power series, what happens is the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. You can bring it inside. c sub n's are constants. Bring down the n and take the x minus a to the n minus 1. Something subtle happened from the previous sum to the current sum that we're at. The previous sum started at zero, while this current sum starts at one. 
Why is that? Well, if it was to start at zero, you'd have a zero because n is right there multiplied by c sub n. And then it would be x minus a who's raised to the negative one. So to avoid that term, just start it at one. And so uh, it's not going to change the radius of convergence by taking the derivative. So you'll keep the same. Um, well, maybe. Well, just be careful. Um, and so it shouldn't change it, though. <laughs> All right. Now, if we can do um, the derivative of a function and find its power series, then we can take the integral of a function and find its power series. Term by term. The original function up top and its power series representation, we integrate the left and we integrate the right. C zero, C sub zero times x, C sub one times the quantity of x minus a squared over two, C sub two times the quantity of x minus a cubed over three, and so on. The integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. And so we can bring the sum in outside and put the integral inside and take the antiderivative of x minus a to be x minus a to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. Now something subtle happened there. I put a little plus c on there. You see, when we integrate the left, we'll get a plus c. And every in individual term has a plus c on it. But these all these random constants can be combined together. So I've combined them all together on the right-hand side. And we can find out what the c is by plugging in the center. The center will kill almost every term except for the, the constant term. All right, great. And the interval of convergence should stay the same. All right, so let's see it done. Do we have time for this? What about the derivative of 1 over 1 minus x? What is that? Treat it as like 1 minus x to the negative 1. That way you can avoid the quotient rule. And just do the power chain rule. Bring down the minus 1, take it to the minus 2. Derivative of the inside, though, another minus 1. Those negative 1s cancel out. It's 1 over the quantity of 1 minus x squared. So that's the derivative of the function, who was a geometric series function. Now we need the derivative of the terms and the derivative of the summation. So 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, what is the derivative there? It's going to be 0 plus 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared. What about the summation? It's going to be n times x to the n minus 1. Make sure it starts at 1, though. So this is different enough that it deserves its own place on the list. The geometric series is first on the list. This guy here, the derivative of the geometric series, is second on the list. How much time do we have? Do you have time for another? Let's try one more. Let's alter the 1 over 1 minus x to be 1 over 1 plus x again. We've, we've seen that. We've done that already alternating and let's integrate that what's the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x it's, it's the natural log of 1 plus x technically an absolute value bars but for the x's that we're going to use the x is between minus 1 and 1 we don't have to worry about that so let's integrate the terms now let's integrate the series let's bring the summation outside and integral inside you could pull out the uh terms that don't have an x in them but you can't take them all the way out if they have an n in them all right so the natural log of one plus x plus a random constant is going to be equal to x minus x squared over two minus x uh, plus x cubed over three minus x fourth over four and all these other random constants added on combined together and that written in summation form is for you to take x to the n plus 1, divide by n plus 1, still have the alternating there, plus some random constant. Who can be combined with the other random constant? And we have ourselves the summation. But we need to know what this, what is this random constant? Plug in the center. The center is a 0. Everything's centered at 0 here. Powers of x we have. So... What it does for you is it'll kill every single term. Look at, look at the series. It's x minus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 minus x fourth over 4. Plug it in 0 will kill all those. Left-hand side, plug it in 0 will give you a natural log of 1, which is 0. Okay, so then the constant ends up being 0. And now we have number 3 on our list. 
the natural log of one minus X is power series. All right, this video is getting a little long. Let's stop right there. There's going to be one more that we'll add to our list in this series of videos where we look at um, arctan's power series. And then when we jump to Taylor series, we'll be able to uh, find a, a, a general power series. These all happen to be coming from the geometric series. All right, thanks for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. We're going to help you through this journey of calculus two. Um, please like and subscribe or comment down below if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next video.